Hi, this is Troy from Andover, Massachusetts, and you're listening to the Letter Pod Podcast. You sleep your headphones on. I'll be your radio. And if you turn me on. Welcome to Letterboxing Podcast number one. If you'd like to contribute to a Letterboxing podcast, please join our Yahoo group at groups.yahoo.com slash group slash letterboxing underscore podcast. If you'd like to send us comments, please email them to us at comments at letterpod.net. For those of you that aren't already familiar with letterboxing, let me take a few minutes to give you an overview and explain how you can get started letterboxing. Letterboxing is an intriguing treasure hunt style outdoor activity. Letterboxers hide small waterproof boxes in publicly accessible places and post clues to finding the boxes online on one of several websites like letterboxing.org and AtlasQuest. However, clues to finding some of the most highly sought after boxes are passed around by word of mouth. There are about 20,000 letterboxes hidden in North America alone. Individual letterboxes usually contain a logbook an often hand-carved rubber stamp, and may contain an ink pad. Finders make an imprint of the letterbox's stamp in their personal logbook and leave an imprint of their personal stamp in the letterbox's logbook. Letterboxing is said to have started in England in 1854 when a Dartmoor National Park guide left a bottle at Cranmere Pool with his calling card in it and an invitation to those who found the bottle to add theirs. Eventually, visitors began leaving a self-addressed postcard or note in the jar, hoping for them to be returned by mail by the next visitor. That's the origin of the term letterboxing. In case you don't know, a letterbox is a British term for a mailbox. This practice ended in time, however, and the current custom of using rubber stamps and visitors' logbooks came into use. It caught on in the U.S. in 1998 after an article in Smithsonian Magazine. To get started, you'll need a trail name, rubber stamp, pencil or pen, small sketchbook, one or more ink pads or brush markers, and optionally, a simple compass. A trail name is your letterboxing identity. Some letterboxers choose to use their real names, but most choose a trail name that means something special to them. Examples of a few trail names are Mark and Sue, The Drew Clan, Team Green Dragon, Silent Doug, Clueless, and my own, Joy. The image for the rubber stamp should mean something personal to you or your family, and is either hand-carved or commercially made. This is your personal stamp, and you'll use it to make an imprint in the logbook of each letterbox that you find. If you letterbox as a family, you can either use one team stamp or a stamp for each person. The pencil or pen is used to add your trail name and date next to your personal stamp imprint that you've made in the logbook. You might also want to add a personal comment about your experience finding the letterbox. The sketchbook is your personal logbook, where you stamp imprints using the stamps in the letterboxes that you find. It's best to use acid-free heavyweight paper. Paper with a smooth finish gives the best impression. An alternative is to make an imprint from the letterbox stamp on plain paper, then later cut it out and add it to a scrapbook. At a minimum, you should carry one ink pad or brush marker to ink up the stamps to make your impressions. The easiest type of ink pad to use has a raised foam pad. Colorbox pigment ink pads are an excellent choice. The letterbox that you find will sometimes contain an ink pad, but many do not. If you find that you enjoy letterboxing, you may want to purchase a set of 24 Marvy brush markers. Their large brush point and bright, non-toxic, odorless watercolors make them perfect for rubber stamping because the color stays wet longer than other markers. No, this isn't a paid advertisement for Marvy brush markers. I just really like these pens. Although many letterboxes don't require it, you should consider purchasing a simple base plate compass that costs about $12. You won't need a fancier compass since nearly all letterbox clues reference simple compass bearings based on magnetic north. Now that you're fully equipped, you need to locate some clues to letterboxes near you. The primary website for letterboxing clues is letterboxing.org. Another popular website is atlasquest.com. Once you find the clues to a letterbox that you'd like to find, 
read it carefully, and try to locate and print out a trail map of the area in which you'll be hiking. The most important things to remember when letterboxing are respect and safety. Respect for the environment and for the letterbox that someone has created, and your own personal safety. Letterboxing is intended to be an environmentally friendly activity with as little impact as possible on the environment involved when hunting for letterboxes. Letterboxes should always be hidden in publicly accessible areas, yet out of sight of casual visitors, sometimes called muggles. Don't disturb any historical landmark or private property. Do not dig, remove native vegetation, disturb natural rock formations, or interfere with animals or their habitat. Leave the location better than you find it. We encourage you to remove any litter left behind by people who care less for the land than you do. Respect the contents of each letterbox and the effort put into it by the letterboxer who made it. Letterboxes usually only cost about 5 or $10 to make, but the letterboxer who created it also put a lot of time and effort into creating and placing the letterbox. There are hazards of letterboxing, such as poison ivy and creatures like snakes or spiders that tend to like the same crevices and cavities where letterboxes are often hidden. It's usually best to use a stick to poke into crevices, then reach in carefully for the letterbox, or use gloves. Also, it's better to letterbox with a partner, or let others know where you're going. Carrying a cell phone is also a good idea, although some letterboxes are located in areas without cellular service. Most importantly, use common sense to letterbox safely. When you arrive at the location of the letterbox by following the clues, make sure there aren't others around when you go to retrieve it to prevent its location from being discovered by non-letterboxers who might not respect the letterbox. Be careful not to damage any plants or historical structures in your search for the box. Actual digging should never be required, but you usually have to look under rocks, sticks, or leaves to find the letterbox. Once you've retrieved the letterbox, move a bit away from the hiding place before opening it. If someone comes along and asks what you're doing, be creative. Sometimes you'll search for the letterbox and not be able to find it. It could either be missing or simply difficult to find. Although this can sometimes be frustrating, just remember the great time that you've had with the hike and the hunt, even if you don't find the letterbox. The letterbox container will typically be some type of plastic food storage container, although many types can be used as long as they're watertight. Some containers are very small, such as a film canister, or may be disguised as a rock or some other natural feature. Inside the letterbox, you'll find a logbook and rubber stamp. You may also find an ink pad and pen or pencil. Stamp the imprint of your personal stamp into the letterbox's logbook and write in any information that you'd like. Next, stamp the imprint of the letterbox's stamp in your personal logbook. You might also add the name of the letterbox, who created it, the date that you found it. Some people also like to add a little note about their experience into their personal logbook. Once you've finished stamping up, be sure to seal any plastic bags and the letterbox container itself carefully and replace it as you would hope to find it, completely hidden from view, with the contents protected from the elements. Water is the biggest threat to letterboxes. If you find a letterbox damaged or the logbook is full, please notify its owner. Check the logbook to see if it includes an email contact address. Otherwise, contact the owner via the website that had the clues. Owners usually enjoy hearing your experience finding their letterbox, even when no maintenance is required. We'll talk about how you can plant your own letterbox in a future letterboxing podcast, but in the meantime, I hope that you find letterboxing as fun and addicting as I do. Happy hunting! At the beginning of this podcast, you heard Headphones by Fluid, which is available at magnatune.com. The instrumental music used in this podcast is Hiking the Shining Path by Warren Butler from his album Cultivation of Grace. For the triples, start at the rooster.